Voila. Okay. So we're going to start talking today about leverage and how to leverage a business in a shift period. So leverage is basically working with allied resources. Every day you come into contact with people you should consider uh, to be allied resources. These are people who can help you build, sustain, and improve your business. So in this particular case, we're not talking about direct employees. We're talking about other resources, other business avenues that you can use to uh, make your business go forward. And you guys should all have the course materials. Uh, if you read through page 13, 14 in there, they give you some nice ideas about what that should look like. Um, so part of what you want to do in this using allied resources, uh, it means to subcontract your way to what you need to get done. Uh, and that's really important. Subcontracting has been used in every industry to multiply the effectiveness of your resources to get to targets and to not overly spend in the process of getting there. So it's part of what was discovered during the industrial revolution in that uh, the modern economies require a mobile workforce. And that means it can be moved from industry to industry, from company to company in a highly mobile way uh, to work on the expansion at hand at any given point in time. So for both business tasks and personal tasks, um, there are a lot of things that you can add in that give you a way to acquire an allied resource. So if you look in the student materials, um, there are uh, lists of who those resources might be. Um, so somebody take a quick look. I'm going to move some things around here for a second. And give me just a moment. Unfortunately, I can't display two things at once. So I kind of have to jump about. Okay, so this one, it is, uh, take a look at page 16 in the uh, student manual. What you'll see there is a nice list of business tasks that you can subcontract out. Uh, oh, let, if I do that, it covers it up. Let me stop share for a moment. Let me reshare. There, can you all see that? Oh, I go. If I do that, I can't see. Okay, there. All right. There you go. Okay. So here's a list of some of the things that you can work on when you're trying to subcontract out work. Now, remember that in every situation, uh, what we've got is, I'm going to turn Slack off. It keeps dinging on me. Um, you've got an opportunity to gain back time, whether it's on the personal side or on the business side. So uh, what kind of folks can help you with that? Well, you can go out and contract work to be done uh, on any of the ones you see there. It can range from business type functions, which would include accounting, bookkeeping. Uh, you've got IT, things like database administration. You've got marketing, the printing, uh, transaction control, which is more administrative. Um, search engine marketing, which is more web mastering. Uh, call center phones. Um, there's a lot of services that are out there that the advantage of using them is when you need them, they're there and they can be contracted for a relatively short period of time or a long period of time, it's entirely up to you. And that's a huge advantage when you're trying to manage a profit margin. Remember that first and foremost, our businesses are profit and loss above all else. So whatever we're doing, whether we can take dollars off the personal side, housing, entertainment expenses, or we take money off of things like printing and mailing, uh, pre-listing, relocation, marketing, all those kinds of things, uh, we, can, we can do that much more easily uh, when we leverage the resources through contracts. So let me ask you guys a question. 
um, how many of you are currently using um, your command to do the marketing and the advertising uh, for your business? Just thumbs up if you're using it. You mean command or something else? Uh, command. I don't want to get there yet. I'm, okay. I'm having to do much on air table and part prospect now. How many of you are using something to get you there? Some external software. Yeah, well, the, I'm using the KW commercial, which okay. is they have. I just sent out the flyer, and we're fixing it today for the um, the donation. But it's they mailed him. But that's the hard part. I'm getting my daughter to help me organize the contacts in groups, which is too okay. seems to take hours. Yeah, that that can be very time consuming. I've been working uh, about. 1700 um, individuals who are in the middle tier of real estate business in Santa Clara County. Uh, that means that they are um, basically selling between one and 15 homes a year. And that's a lot. And loading that into a database and cleaning it and making sure the upload works correctly and verifying it is very time consuming. It's an investment. So that's a good example. If you can find someone who's good at it and pay them as a contractor, sometimes that's better than trying to do it yourself. Well, how, tell me if you find me who likes it because my daughter can't stand it. <laughs> she knows how. <laughs> so it's been sort of a fail all along, but I did just hire Robert that I told you he's the movie maker and he's going to help with okay. this very complicated air table we're actually going to help pretty soon but getting the database is really tough you know or keeping yeah. up they people forget you yes what do you do lupita does helen do it oh you can't talk with you yes oh god you're smart you're smart see when we can go back to the office maybe i'll get helen to share does she take your contacts and organize them and whatever you use yes Ah, I see. Then you're 10 times ahead of me. This has been my downfall. So there's even agents in the office that for various personal reasons would probably be very willing to help you get um, contacts uploaded or spreadsheets uploaded. I know of one case. Um, gee, I don't know if I should name her by name. Okay, I'm going to. It's, it's certainly something good. If you're interested in one person's approach to that, you might want to talk to Maddie. Uh, Maddie actually contracted another agent in the office to upload the information. And that was brilliant. She didn't have to spend the time to figure out how to do that. And it's not something you do every day. So well, I talked to Susan. I think one of the people she talked to, Susan and I worked for months. Mine, the basic database to send it out is okay. My air table that like what i'm doing i actually right. called yesterday and today on it it's just taken a couple of years to organize it takes a lot so susan and i help but just doing the basic stuff that wouldn't be so bad if i weren't working on the other part so right. that was my dilemma yeah. sure so what i'm suggesting here is that there are creative ways even within your resource pools here at keller williams santa clara valley and i'm sure there are also those in silicon city that you can probably get agents and work with them on the side. Might even be able to get somebody like a director of agent services to help you with that on a side contract. Um, so can I ask a question about what is Locke or Olivia, what's in their job? Because I did send an email out about the flyer, but I didn't get an answer back from either one of them. So, and I know Locke gets busy, but what is part question. of their job with that awesome. flyer? Yeah, it's really probably not part of the class, Maureen. Oh. I'm happy to answer it offline. Oh, okay. The short form of the answer is all of Locke's work comes through the MCA. Ah. So ah. he's the one to talk to about parsing work. Oh. Unless it's something that you know um, that Olivia does as part of uh, being a director of agent services. Uh, but Locke definitely has to take a whole myriad of um, priorities yeah and stacy helps him by um funneling those through a priority filter 
You know, he, 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 I shouldn't say he didn't answer. He forwarded the flyer, which was fine. But no, I get it. I get it. Good. All right. I want to keep it generic. So uh, good. And if you want to talk to me more, I'm happy to talk to you, Maureen. Okay. So what I want you to think about as part of this class and about part of the shift is how you can use your, your time and the value of the time, which is probably between $100 and $200 an hour. Uh, I did some simple calculations uh, based on a 200-day work year and how much you would make at $100,000 and $200,000 a year. If that's your gross, then you know it drops out that you're making between $100 and $150 an hour. So anything theoretically that you could contract out that is less than $150 an hour and at the same time gives you a return on investment and you're going to use the extra time to do the function that would normally be $150 an hour valuation, then it makes complete sense to do it. But here's what folks often do with some contractors. They hire them to do the job and they think, okay, they're doing it for 28 bucks an hour and now I don't need to worry about it anymore. I think I'm gonna go do another round of golf. That didn't help your business. Might have helped your swing, but it's not gonna help your business because you're not doing something at the same time that's going to give you a higher rate of return. And I tell you, whether you're in high tech or US Defense Department uh, or in our real estate uh, association or real estate office, it works the same way. Because cost is defined as an alternative for gone, the cost is only good if the alternative to what you're doing is worth more. So it's a way to multiply your time, not really a way to give you free time. Now the work-life balance is a whole different discussion and not really part of the context of where we are right here. But it is something to think about. So what I wanna challenge you to do is this week, think through some of these and look back through the way you do business and what you pay and pick one or two items and figure out if there is a better way to do it. Less expensive, more easily put together, um, reaches more people, excuse me, people. You give that an analysis. So that analysis is something you wanna run, pick two things, and I'll check back with you as we start next week on how that's going. So I'm gonna stop sharing again for a second. I'm going to share a different screen. There we are. And now we're back to... Bob, uh, that's Larry. Uh, one of the biggest challenge I find in, in when you bring on people to help out with the task, unless you're really clear on what you want, it's oh. hard to have people to help you build the general idea and be, I guess, intuitive or willing to yes. go with the extra mile to put it together for you. Yes. And so what happened is that when we manage people to do it, it's kind of like you feel like you're doing it yourself already. Yes. You know, so it's kind of like, oh man, am I being effective? So if it's a uh, constant path, uh, I mean, constant task, mm -hmm. then you can see the payout, the return, it's great. But if you're looking at like, okay, can you help me with my database and put it up, upload it for me or clean it up? they wouldn't know what to do or how, how you're thinking. And then, you know, once that's up and then after that, if there's continuing maintenance, it'll make, it'll make sense. Right. You know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. That's why. Okay, so what would you recommend? I mean, does Keller William kind of tell you, okay, here's the strategy around it and this is what you do. Or... There are some strategies around hiring and there's a section. If you're watching me scroll down the left-hand side, uh, when I get down to about here, let's have that discussion.